we have seen various mathematical representations for regular languages and today we are going to prove that some languages are non regular so the topic for today is non regularity of languages so we can start with an example language is this language regular is n number of a's followed by n number of b's for some natural number n that is the language so what's your answer can it be regular assume that it is regular we have to see whether it is regular or not assume that it is regular that means uh, there exists a dfa if it is regular there exists a dfa then what could be the most simple dfa for accepting this language the first string is epsilon so you can have this dfa for accepting epsilon and the next string is ab and then you can extend it like this and here i am not showing the other transition which are all defined to a non finite state and from there only a self loop for a and b assume that it is not, uh, it is there such a state to which all the undefined transitions are going for simplicity i am not showing it it's just like an n of a i am drawing this uh, okay and what is the next string it is a square b square so a square b square is accepted then next is a cube b cube so a raised to 3 b raised to 3 then a raised to 4 b raised to 4 and it goes like that okay all the other transition the a, uh, a and b are defined from here and uh, from here uh, you take it to the other state okay all the undefined transitions are assumed to be going to a special state here and uh, there is a single self loop for a and b so here not that uh, for accepting epsilon so this is the first state is the accepting state itself and uh, for accepting ab and this is an important state that is the boundary between a and b for a square b square this is the boundary for a cube b cube this is the boundary for a raised to 4 b raised to 4 this is the boundary so it looks like in this naive design you need a separate state for each n for n equal to 0 this is that distinguishing state for n equal to 1 2 3 etc so this looks like this simple logic requires infinitely many states in a that is not possible a dfa means with only finitely many states so this is not a possible thing now the question is is there a clever design of a dfa a which requires only finitely many states that's a question it's a very interesting question anyway this logic is not going to give you one because there are going to be infinitely many states but that is not enough because there could be some other clever way of doing it like we counted uh, even number of a's and odd number of a's we counted by using a logic so here again can we do something like using a prime number uh, can you uh, count it in a very clever way so that you will get a design which uh, takes only finitely many states it's a very interesting question okay we don't know actually uh, is it possible or not if you want to prove that it is not possible then that is a, a nice thing so we can try to do it and before we go and prove it we need to recollect some basic uh, non facts about graph theory let us do it now here there is another interesting question which is what is the length of the longest acyclic path in a graph with n nodes or vertices the question is given a graph with n nodes or n vertices what is the length of the longest path do you have any answer maybe we can try to understand with uh, simple examples so here is a table that we are going to form suppose n is equal to 1 that is only one vertex 
then how many what uh, edges are possible zero edges are possible because if you add a, an edge like this then that forms a loop so zero only zero edges are possible what if you have uh, two edges in the graph sorry two vertices in the graph then only one edge is possible this is another graph where two vertices are there then only one edge so when it is two it is only one edge now try for uh, three vertices this is another graph so you can observe that only two edges are possible or here the length of the longest path is zero here the length of the longest path is just one here it is two this is the longest path now the question is can you now generalize it as n minus one so can you say that if there are n vertices in a graph then the length of the longest acyclic path is n minus 1. Now that here if you add a, I add this edge, then it forms a cycle. Or you can have a self loop that itself forms a cycle here itself. So no possibility. So is this correct? What is your answer? If you recall from basic graph theory, if you have learnt it, and the answer is yes, you can, and we can have a theorem. The length of the longest acyclic path in a graph with n vertices or nodes is n minus 1. We need to have a proof for it. We can prove it by induction on n. The base case we have already seen, the base case is n is equal to 1. The number of vertices is uh, 1. Then only one vertex is there, so no edges are possible and so the maximum length path is 0, n minus 1 is 0 and that is done. So base case is done. I hope you remember uh, mathematical induction. So the next is uh, assumption that is induction hypothesis. What is it? Assume that the length of the longest acyclic path in a graph with the k vertices or not is k minus 1. Exactly this statement is assumed when n is equal to k. If there are k vertices, we assume that length of the longest path is k minus 1. So here is this graph shown. There are k vertices and this is the longest path. Assume that this is the longest path with the n, my, sorry, k minus 1 edges in it. This is the longest path with a k minus 1 edges or length as k minus 1. So this is the assumption induction hypothesis and now we have to prove it for n is equal to k plus 1. We assumed it for n is equal to k and we need to prove it for n is equal to k plus 1. So here is the graph with uh, k vertices and we uh, assume in the hypothesis that the length of the longest path is k minus 1 and now we added a vertex okay if you added a vertex you can extend this path right you can put an edge like this so if you put that edge what are you getting now you got you are getting a path of length this is k minus 1 plus 1 that is k so you are getting a path of length k this k minus 1 is the length of this path plus this edge plus 1. So this 1 and minus 1 are cancelled and uh, so length k path is what we are getting. Are we done? So we got a path with uh, length k plus uh, length k when the number of vertices is increased from k to k plus 1. We managed to get a path of length uh, k by extending the longest path in the original graph. Is the proof completed? No, it is not. That is an interesting question. Can we have a length k plus 1 path? Now we have a length k path. If we can have one more edge like maybe like this, then the uh, statement is not correct. So can we have uh, this path, what will be the length now? This is k minus 1 plus 1 k 
plus 1 that is k plus 1 so is it possible this is not a very easy question to answer and that is the nice uh, thing about this proof also how will we proceed from here the answer is no you cannot have this yet then why why i cannot have because we can prove that if you add this edge then this will create a cycle okay if it will create a cycle then we cannot have this edge now how we will prove that this will create a cycle and here is it goes we will ask this question and why is it that this edge is missing in the original graph not that this is the newly added vertex and uh, when we wanted to have a k plus 1 length path we need to find a vertex which was originally there to which we can add this edge suppose this is possible if we are adding this then the question is then why is it that this edge is not there suppose originally in the hypothesis this was possible then what would be the length of this path this is k minus 1 plus 1 so that is k so with k what is this itself we would have got a path of length k but according to hypothesis that is not allowed then why is it that it is not allowed if the hypothesis is correct then this is not allowed then why is it that this is not allowed that means this vertex is connected to the red path then this will form a cycle okay that is the case why we don't have this edge in the graph with k vertices is because that is forming a cycle so you can assume now that here is a path which connects this yellow vertex to this red path and hence this forms a cycle in the graph with the n sorry k vertices and that is why you don't have this okay then you see if you put this edge then this will form a cycle this will form a cycle hope you followed it otherwise please uh, watch it again and see what is going on and you can see that this will form a cycle and hence this edge is not allowed okay so if you add one more edge the path is increased by length of the path is increased by at most one so we establish that when we increase the number of vertices from k to k plus 1 we got a path of length k and k plus 1 path is not possible and hence we proved the theorem the theorem is that the length of the longest as i click part in a graph with n vertices or not is n minus 1 that is if there are n vertices in a graph then the maximum length of a path is n minus 1 this is a very useful information which we can exploit to prove non regularity of certain languages so uh, take this theorem and uh, move forward now we are going to prove that this language is non regular so what is the language a raised to n b raised to n for all n greater than or equal to 0 the string is in the language means that string is some k number of a's followed by k number of b's for some natural number k and now we are going to prove that this language is not regular by using the method of contradiction for the purpose of contradiction assume that this language is regular the moment you assume you can assume the existence of a dfa because without loss of generality we can assume that there exists a dfa namely a said that the language of a is the given language okay now consider an input to this assumed dfa 
assume that there exists a DFA for this language, give an input a raised to m, b raised to m to a such that m, m is the number of uh, a's that is same as the number of b's, that m is greater than or equal to the number of states in the DFA. This is the number of states, recall that q is the state set and this is the length of the state set, length of a set means cardinality of the set. So, only m or less states are there and the input, you can give any input because n is greater than or equal to 0, you can find any, any value, natural number. I am taking a natural number m such that the m is greater than or equal to the number of states in the assumed DFE. Okay. Now, is this string in the language? a raised to m, b raised to m in the given language, a c t is because it is in this form. And what would be the path for a raised to m, b raised to m, that is the input in the assumed DFA, it will look like this, a raised to m is going to a state, from there it is going to a final state, a raised to m, b raised to m is taking you to a final state. It must because it is in the language. So that is the case. And now look at this part, this part. What is the length of this path? M number of A. So the length of the path is M. And you know that M is greater than or equal to the number of states. So the length of the path is greater than or equal to the number of states in the DFA. Then from the previous theorem, we know that there must be a loop in this path because without a loop or a cycle, the maximum length is m minus 1 only. If there are m, the maximum number of states is less than or equal to m. So, the maximum length of a path is m minus 1 only. But here you have a path of length m. So, from the previous theorem, it is guaranteed that this path is containing a cycle in it. Okay. Now redraw this part with a cycle. It looks like this. M is equal to i plus j plus k. That is a raised to i. This loop is a raised to j and uh, then a raised to k. And hall is uh, actually a raised to m. Hope you are able to see it. It's, this part is actually a raised to m a raised to m which is split as m is split in uh, split as i j and k a raised to i is taking you to the loop of loop and then the loop is a raised to j and then to this state which is a raised to k if that is the case then you can say that a raised to i b raised sorry a raised to i a raised to k b raised to m is in the language of this automaton. Why? Because this is the part. A raised to i, A raised to k, A raised to k, B raised to m. I am not taking this loop. Then I will get into the final state and hence this is in the language. And you can rewrite this as A raised to i plus k, A raised to i plus k, i plus k number of a's. So this is just a rewriting of this string a raised to i plus k means i plus k number of a's. Okay, that's fine. And what is i plus k? You can uh, see that i plus k is m minus j. i plus k is m minus j. So, you can write i plus k as m minus j. Again, rewriting it m minus j, where j is not equal to 0. Why is it that j is not equal to 0? Because j is the length of this loop. J cannot be 0 because it's not it's not an epsilon n of a. It's a DFA. So a loop must be of length at least 1, and that is why j is non-zero. If j is non-zero, then what is the case? What is this string? A raised to m minus a positive uh, number. B raised to m. That is not in the form a raised to n, b raised to n. Okay. So, this is a contradiction for the assumption that there exists a DFA. 
if there exists a DFA, that DFA will accept some strings which are not in this language. That is what we established. Hence, the existence of DFA is not possible and a contradiction. So, proved. So, in this class, we proved that the language a raised to n, b raised to n, where n is a whole number, is not a regular language. So, there are non-regular languages. And tomorrow, we are going to discuss a lemma known as pumping lemma for proving that some languages are non-regular. Thank you.